and welcome to the topic of special relativity. So in this topic we will be looking at first the history of the relativity or rather its place in the history of physics uh, and the problem. So how we found out that Newtonian physics was not the ultimate answer. We'll look at Einstein's solution to that problem which is his theory of special relativity and uh, with that we'll give an introduction to the new coordinate system that we'll use to describe space and time. The remainder of the videos will be looking at some interesting effects uh, that result from Einstein's theory. So in this video we'll begin with the introduction. We'll start with what we know. So we're looking at a subject on Earth traveling at speeds that we can travel on Earth. We have a stationary blue man whose name is Laurel and we have a dog. We want to know the distance of Laurel from the dog. So we know how to do this, we just measure from the man to the dog. So if we formalize that, all we're saying is that the man has his own coordinate system and it's centered on him. So he has an X, Y and Z coordinate axis and he also has the time at which the event is occurring. So then in his coordinate system, the dog is at some point P, uh, which is equal to X, Y, Z, and the time coordinate T. So we're going to keep this nice and simple. So we're only, only going to be looking in one direction. So for this entire topic, for all the videos in this topic, I'm only going to be looking in the X direction. So in that case, our dog is the distance X from our stationary laurel. So we can write the location of the dog, which is P, at some time T, in terms of the coordinates of Laurel's system, which is x, y, z, and t. And now we've got a second man, Hardy, riding past on his bike. So he's, he's going in the positive x direction at some velocity u. So Hardy, like Laurel, also has his own coordinate system centered on him. And this coordinate system we'll call uh, x dash, y dash, and z dash, and the time will be t dash. So his, his horizontal distance to the dog is x dash. Both Laurel and Hardy have zero acceleration so they're both in inertial reference frames and for this entire topic since we're only dealing with Einstein's theory of special relativity we will only concern ourselves with inertial reference frame. So at time t equals zero Hardy is level with Laurel so at t equals zero their distances to the dog are equal. After some time t which is shown in the diagram He's traveled some distance in the x direction, and we'll call this distance delta x. So the distance that Hardy is from the dog now, his x dash, is equal to his original distance x minus the distance he has traveled, which is delta x. We know that distance is equal to speed times time, so we can write Hardy's distance, x dash, in terms of Laurel's distance, x. And we find that x dash is equal to x minus u, Hardy's speed, times t. So that what we've got there is Hardy's distance x dash from the point of view of an observer in a different reference frame, so in Laurel's reference frame. And this should be familiar to us um, as it's something we've already done in our Newtonian motion. So the formal name for this transform, so for getting our space and time coordinates in terms of an observer in a different inertial reference frame, is called a Galilean transform. So all you need to remember from this slide is the name. So when we're working in Newtonian physics, we find our relative distances and velocities using something called the Galilean transform. So we've done our distances and now we can move on to have a look at our velocities. We should by now be reasonably familiar with relative velocities. So we have the similar situation. Heidi is cycling at some speed u dash in the positive x direction and Laurel is walking in the same direction at some speed u. We have our stationary observer, in this case our dog. We know from Newtonian relative motion that to the dog, to our stationary observer, Hardy is travelling at a velocity u dash and Laurel is travelling at a velocity u. However, from Laurel's point of view, so Hardy's velocity relative to Laurel is equal to u dash minus u. So there should be no surprises there, I've just used the relative velocity equation. So now we have a look at this situation, this exact same situation, except that we're traveling at much faster speeds. So here we have a light beam in our black traveling at speed C, so the speed of light in a vacuum. And we have a rocket ship, which is traveling at an appreciable fraction of the speed of light. And we'll call that velocity UR. 
And we have our observer, our stationary observer, Laika, our space dog. So by Newton, we know that the velocity of light relative to our stationary observer is c. And the velocity of light relative to the spaceship, again using our relative velocity equation, is equal to c minus the velocity of that, that spaceship or that rocket ship. So all is well and good. <clears throat> and all was well and good for a good 200 years, right up until the arrival of James Clark Maxwell. So James Maxwell was the equivalent of Newton in the field of electromagnetism. So Newton's genius was that he took the experimental observations of excellent experimental physicists of Bray, of Galileo and Kepler, and he turned them into a set of universal physical laws that governed motion. So for example, the laws F equals ma and our gravitational force. And with, with these laws, he predicted, for example, the behavior of gravity. As a parallel, so Maxwell took the excellent experimental observations of Faraday and of Ampere, and he turned those into a set of universal laws which governed electricity and magnetism. So those are the laws that govern the behavior of light. And these were his equations. And with these equations, he predicted um, the speed of light in a vacuum. The problem is that Maxwell predicted that the speed of light in a vacuum is a universal constant. And we'll look at more at what that means in the next slide. Right, so we know that under Newtonian physics, in this scenario, to find the speed of, the, of light relative to the rocket ship, we would use relative velocities. So we'll look at how that transform works for Newton and for Maxwell. Both of them are concerned with the speed of light. By Newton, the speed of light from a stationary observer is c. And by Maxwell, we find the same thing. Using the Galilean transform, we find that the speed of light relative to that of the rocket ship is equal to c minus ur. But by Maxwell, we find that the speed of light relative to the spaceship is still c. So this is what we meant when we said that the speed of light is a universal constant. It doesn't depend on the velocity of the observer. It will always be equal to c. And this simple statement, although the finding of this statement was not simple, turned physics upside down once again. So when we're using Newtonian physics, using this Galilean transformation to calculate relative velocities is fine at low speeds. The laws of motion are invariant under any transformation using the Galilean transformation, which means that the laws of motion are exactly the same in any inertial frame of reference. So the universal laws. But for Maxwell, when we use a Galilean transform uh, on his laws of electromagnetism, we find that they vary. They depend on the speed at which you travel, so the speed of your inertial reference frame. And what that means is that electrical and optical phenomena will behave very differently depending on how fast we're traveling. So in Einstein's famous thought experiment, where he imagined himself sitting on a light beam and he was traveling, watching another light beam traveling next to him, if we use this Galilean transform, we would find that the light beam would cease to exist at the speed of light. So we have a problem. Either Newton is correct, and by moving at some constant velocity, any velocity v, we are somehow in a different universe with different laws of physics, or we've got something wrong. So either way, we've got something to investigate. And in the next video, we'll have a look at how that was done.